Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you all for attending my talk. I'm very excited to be here, a little bit nervous, um, but warm, which was, I told, the most important thing when coming to Riga. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to speak today about um, lessons in building teams. Um, I believe that teams have the power to create magical things, and I've had the great opportunity of working across many various teams across different sectors. So the way I'll kind of structure my talk is I will introduce the lesson learned, and then I will talk about the team and connect the lesson learned to the team itself. So the six lessons to be learned um, that I will cover will be stay resilient, build culture every day, innovate through process, promote transparency, find your team story, and slay constraints. So stay resilient. So I think resiliency is definitely part of the startup culture. Um, every day you come in, there's a fire to put out. There's a lot of crazy things going on. And so resiliency is really part of who we are in our DNA and how we go about completing our jobs. When I think about resiliency, I don't really think about work, actually. I think more about my personal life. And I'll get into that by telling you guys the story of my grandmother. This is my grandmother. Esther Kanyamibwa, she's 99 years old. She's many things. Um, she's an artist. She actually designed and created um, the dress that you're seeing in the background as well. She's a survivor, so my personal background is actually my family came to the States from Rwanda in 94 as a result of what happened in Rwanda, um, what people know as a Rwandan genocide. And she's also an operational mastermind. <laughs> so my father grew up with 20 brothers and sisters on a farm, in the middle of Rwanda. Um, and so my grandmother had 20 children, and she had to organize all of them. So her, her team, or her chief of staffs, were her eldest daughters. They took care of everything from um, helping the kids figure out what to wear, um, fetching water, organizing a dinner with 20 guests every night, as you could call it. It's probably a lot more work. And um, also organizing and helping to take care of the farm. My grandfather had over 200 cows. So every week, they would have a meeting where they would get together and talk about the status of everyone and think through some of the things that were happening within the household and the interesting thing about my grandmother is when everything happened in Rwanda in 94, she actually became a refugee. She lived in various refugee camps. She had to walk by foot um, from Rwanda to the Congo, and many people always spoke about how her resiliency saved lives. Um, she was extremely resourceful. She had to be her entire life. And so when I think about resiliency and I get up every morning, I think about her. Next, I'm going to talk about building culture every day. So culture is something that is a buzzword within the startup um, community, within the tech community. Your culture is going to help you um, scale out your product, and the culture is going to help you differentiate yourself from your competitors. But I don't really think about um, culture in this way, and I didn't really learn about culture in the startup community. I kind of learned about culture by working with people from various different cultures, and I'll get into that with my next slide. So this is a, a conference that maybe some of you guys know. Um, I lived in Berlin for a year and a half, and I worked at a conference called Tech Open Air. And shout out to all the people putting this together. This is a crazy, beautiful process, because I did it. <laughs> um, so this was my team in Berlin. Um, you look across, you can maybe see, oh, these are very um, interestingly dressed people outside of a big Berlin warehouse. Um, and you might see folks that represent design, um, PR, marketing, but really what we represent is um, over 30 nationalities. So you could think um, through how do you build culture across various nationalities and, and, and various uh, mindsets and life stories. And we did that with food. How we came together was through food. Um, our CEO founder was a big proponent of making smoothies and um, helping us get, get ourselves healthy. And what we did together is we would cook. And so we represented countries such, such as South Africa, Italy, Lithuania, Turkey. We had a lot of good food. And we would get together um, weekly, and we would get together outside of just the walls, and we would cook together. If you really want to learn about your team's culture, I challenge you guys to get together weekly and to cook a meal. And this was actually an interesting concept, because during the conference, what happened was really interesting. When things would get hectic, things would get crazy, we'd come back to the kitchen. 
cooking together and thinking about how we were able to translate um, across um, different uh, cultures and really create something that was magical. The conference um, had over um, 20,000 attendees, hundreds of speakers from all over the world, but really what it felt was what it felt like was getting together and making a meal. And that was the interesting thing about this team. Next, I want to talk about innovating through process. So sometimes process scares people, especially startups. Process can seem like a bottleneck. It can seem like something that's going to keep you from actually moving forward. But I actually think of process as an innovative tool. And I'll go ahead and I'll tell you why. So once upon a time, that was my computer. <laughs> Um, I worked in finance um, at Bloomberg LP. I was a global project finance manager. Our industry calls it a technical program manager. And I worked with engineers, a lot of them. And one project that I worked on is we actually built and enhanced the global payroll system um, across various cities, um, London, Tokyo, New York, and it came out of Hurricane Sandy. So there was a big hurricane in New York that caused the city to shut down. And we thought about what would happen if the city shut down and folks couldn't get paid. So we had to build a payroll system that was scaled. So in order to start this project, it took a year. We created a three-month initiative where we actually built up the requirements of the project itself. In the beginning, people were kind of like, this is a lot of work. This process is um, kind of keeping us from actually doing the project. But actually what happened was super interesting because as the project started, we would go back to that requirements document. That requirements document actually allowed us to scale and to build. The project was super successful. Um, it was, took about 50 engineers um, from, five from five global cities. Um, people got promoted. It was a great success. And that requirements document was actually used by other teams to build out and to scale across different initiatives. So when I think about process, I think about innovation. I think about the power of building something that stands the test of time. And when I think about that concept, I think about my time working at Bloomberg. Next, um, I want to talk about promoting transparency. So transparency is also another buzzword in our industry. Transparency from the CEO, transparency from the stakeholders, from the board, from the people actually doing the work. But what does transparency look like in a global city? Oh my goodness, that's me in a suit. You won't probably see that too often. <laughs> you, might, you might recognize the man in the middle. Um, that's Mayor Bloomberg, and that's me to the right of him. So this picture is uh, 26 um, young professionals. Uh, my first job actually was working in New York City mayor's office. We were chosen from um, across uh, the US to come for a year, work in the New York City's mayor's office and learn about what it means to be a civil servant. And we would, we would get together every week and we would give ourselves a status report about what we were working on. And I really think about transparency as actually having respect for the work that your teammates do. If you don't really know what your teammates do, how do you know the in and outs of their life? How do you know what it takes for them to do their job? I started to realize, because I worked um, for the Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services, so all of the city's um, major initiatives around poor people, that the work that I was doing around um, food stamps was actually very related to the work that um, my, my colleague Hiram was doing in the police department related to the work that um, my, co my colleague um, Matthew was doing in the Department of Probation, because all of these things trickle down. And I'm really proud to have worked for a city and worked for a mayor and I look at all these faces and I think about all of the different agencies we represented and the transparency it took to understand what it means to really build a city um, that is dedicated to citizens. It takes a level of transparency because every single thing that we did, no matter which department or which mayor's office we were part of, was related. And the transparency that we had within our office allowed us to build a city that um, citizens could really relate to and understand. Next, and I'm almost done, so don't worry. I'm a little nervous, though. <laughs> 
I want to talk about finding your team's story. So storytelling is a very, very important initiative. A lot of storytelling, um, people really think it happens um, online or across different media uh, platforms and social media platforms. But storytelling really begins um, within your team walls. What happened to that slide? <laughs> okay, it's all right. Um, that slide is not there, but it's okay because sometimes you just gotta keep going, this show must go on. So I'm gonna tell you about um, a team that I worked on. I came back um, from Berlin in, uh, two, in 2016, and two weeks after I came back, uh, the election happened. It was a very sad day. If it was a happy day for you, the 2016 election, I don't know. That's a little bit strange to me at this point. Um, and I worked um, on a team um, with um, all women. And what we were, we were actually a brand strategy agency. And at the time, a lot of our clients um, were Nike and Jordan brand. And what we had to do um, was help those clients find their story. But that was a very difficult time because the country, um, the United States, didn't really know what, what its story was anymore. Um, the atmosphere in New York was particularly dark. And um, what we did is we actually put together an event, something similar to this one, where we brought um, many women from different backgrounds to talk about why they were sad and what they could do to go forward. Um, the event came out of an initiative we started where every Monday we would come in and we would journal. We would write for 20 minutes. And what came out of those stories wasn't just what we were doing for Nike or what we were doing for Jordan brand. What came out of those stories was really what we were doing for ourselves. So we brought, the women, we brought women together and we talked about that and we realized what we cared about at that time was what brands cared about. Brands wanted to understand women. And at the time, the conversation was really around feminism. It was around the future of women. And that really helped us to tell our internal story and to translate, translate that story throughout. Okay, finally, I want to talk to you about slaying constraints. Um, so when I think about constraints, I definitely think about the startup community. You're usually under-budgeted, understaffed. You probably have a project that came out of nowhere. Maybe you have a stakeholder that came out of nowhere. You're like, I don't understand how this person's not a stakeholder. It's constant thinking about constraints and how you can move them forward. So I'm really proud of these images. Um, I used to work for Slack. Um, my title was Design Studio Manager, so I managed um, the work of the brand team as well as the product design team because we were scrappy and someone had to do the work, so that person was me. And one day, um, we had our marketing stakeholders come to us and say, there's going to be a webinar. And we were like, okay, this, that's great. What, what can we do? Well, actually, we're strapped. In two weeks, we need, you, uh, we need someone to create role-based books that explain how to use Slack across three different domains. So we were like, okay, so does anyone have any copy? Does anyone have any, does, no, no we, we don't have anything and it's happening in two weeks. At the time, we also had a bunch of all other multiple high priority projects happening and coming to the team. So the team was stressed, so I got everyone in the room and I thought about how can we manage our priorities and still get this done. So, these books were actually created in-house. All of the illustrations were done in-house. All the copy was done in-house. Um, my team really um, pulled together a mini miracle, to say the least. We had to cut across budget constraints. Um, we had to cut across resource constraints. And we had to cut across um, stakeholder constraints as well, managing those priorities. And what we did is we created um, handbooks that are still on the website today. I don't know if maybe some of you guys know that Slack had a major redesign. But these books were actually um, one of the first um, key topics um, that are understood as to what Slack does for teams. 
And so you can still find these books on Slack.com. And I look at them and people are probably like, oh, those are really nice pictures and really great words. But what I see is a team that worked around the clock and was still able to get all the other work done and this work done. So now I'm at Twitter. And when I think about Twitter, I think about birds, obviously. And I think about birds trying to get into formation. So sometimes I'm the bird in the front, the one that's very confident and is leading the way. Sometimes I'm one of the birds following who's just happy to have a leader to follow. The one that got lost, for example, two of my slides got lost today, but I still have to find my way. <laughs> um, and what I, hope, what I think we're trying to do at Twitter and what I hope we do, and I know we're going to do, is we're going to get all the birds into a formation. And we're going to think through all of the things that I, that I took from a lot of the other places that I worked um, operationally and, and working on, stra on strategic initiatives. And we're going to be able to do the things that I spoke with you about today. We'll be able to stay resilient, build culture every day, innovate through process, promote transparency, find my team's story or your team's story, and slay constraints. I think about the blueprint of who we are um, and what got us to this room and all the startups that we come from and all the countries that we represent um, as people who have lessons in us that we bring to our job every day. And so I hope that you um, share, you can able, you're able to share my lessons with your teams, and I hope you go out and you do the, world, the work that we all know that is important, which is connecting people to products that really come from very miraculous and awesome teams. Thank you so much for your time, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.